after Steve died and they came to us and talked about the quilt, uh, I worked at Central York Middle School and I guess about 15 people went together and made the quilt. Everybody had a, a place to do it. I mean, everybody wanted to do it. And that made me feel good because AIDS was not a, not a nice thing back in those days. <laughs> child. He was a light of my life. Uh, his father and I divorced when we were, he was quite young, and we were together all the time. And uh, I really love my son, and I really miss my son. But uh, they always say, God giveth and God taketh away, and so this is how we had, I had to cope with this. And I do, I, I miss him. memory is when we would go on vacation and we'd go to the beach and he just loved the water and he loved he was small then and I think thinking back when he was small and didn't have any of the worries that he had as he grew up but it was fun we had a good time together he's a good boy I mean, I knew Steve was, he told me he was gay before he moved to California. And when he moved to California, uh, he had a lot of friends and a lot of partners, which was back in the 80s. I mean, it was not good. And then he, he and another young man got together, and uh, they were very happy. But they knew that AIDS was in the background, and they better go and be checked. And his partner did not have the AIDS virus, but Steve did. So he called me and told me, and I think that was for me the beginning of the end because I knew, and he knew, that there was nothing out there to help him. trunk and he had it in the back of a van and off he went and he waved and I cried and <laughs> it was tough but I knew you know he liked to go different places and he did a lot on his own he did a lot of hiking on his own and concerts and he kind of was a person that did like to do things on his own after he moved to California was two years. I hadn't seen him for two years and I had no idea what he was going to look like because that's when earrings came in and nose and I had no idea and all he came in he was happy and had a pair of sunglasses on and he, that was before he was diagnosed. After he was diagnosed I went out I don't know if he I don't think he came home one time and then I went out three different times because he wasn't able to come on the plane. That was tough. It's something you never get over. It's something that you pray that they will soon find a cure for it. And yes, when you have a child, and you love that child, and you see what he had to go through, you do think about it. Well, I think about it. Every day I have his picture in my bedroom, and every day I look at it and say good morning. And... Yep. It's the only way I got through it, believing in, you know, trusting the Lord and knowing that, you know, he's in a better place. And everybody, I mean, not everybody, but people would say to me, well, God gives us to him and God takes him home when he wants to take him home. So that's how we figure. Down in Washington, I went down, and that's where I met uh, Steve's
Lee's friend came in from California and we went together to see the quilt. And that was overwhelming because there were so many quilts. And I didn't, I hadn't seen the quilt since it left York. It just brought back a lot of memories, a lot of heartache. But it was, it was just, everything was so big. It was just a big area. And to know that all these people have lost loved ones to this disease, it just hurt so bad. Not just for myself, but for the other people too. It just was, it was tough. <laughs> it was. young children who died too young and not that you know we don't want them to pity them but we want them to understand that this was something that was going on back in the 80s and they didn't know and uh, we just want them to to know that they were here and that we loved them and that we would really like to see an end of AIDS that no one has to go through this mothers closer because and none of the sons that have died or daughters didn't know each other so they brought us together as a family just by their death you often wonder what they would grow in you know how they would be what they would grow into when they grew, grew up, what they would be, you know, it, it just, I'm, I don't know. I always wanted to be a grandmother and I knew that I was never going to be a grandmother that way, so, so uh, I miss that. I don't think back in those days people really cared. They thought it was such a bad thing, so they didn't really care about it. Um, as long as I don't have AIDS, it's all right. I don't know how many people in New York have AIDS, but I'm sure that this will bring an awareness to those people that there is help and hoping for a cure. Mm -hmm.